welcome to ACD Combatives, your combatives and control tactics channel. Please like, subscribe, and share. Hey guys, Coach Kurt. So, as promised, part two, uh, good home defense weapon or the best home defense weapon. We went over the rifle uh, last time. Now we're going to go over the shotgun. This is a simple Mossberg 500. Um, it's my favorite shotgun because it's probably the most universal shotgun based on the placement of the safety switch and the slide release button is all the way to the rear. So if you are a smaller statured person with smaller hands on the Mossberg, especially the lefty, you have to reach to the front of the trigger guard to hit it and you see how that really manipulates or it's poor manipulation with your hand unless you have really long fingers with me or someone who has small hands or as a lefty I just use my index finger here as a righty same thing you use your index finger still use my index finger and wrap around so these again if I haven't already mentioned it are safety rounds um, and it's, these are great to practice dry firing with your shotgun because <sighs> you can safely manipulate the action and practice uh, topping off your shotgun and combat reloads and I'm gonna put in different configurations I'm a lefty and my wife is a righty now I don't know if this would be her go-to probably an AR-15 would be her go-to or a pistol and well again we'll, we'll talk more about pistol and why that might be a choice over a shotgun or a rifle. Um, and we discussed in the rifle why you would choose a rifle. I think the rifle is the all around best generic home defense weapon. But there's, there's pros and cons to everything. And again, we'll get into more of that with the pistol when we get there. And the shotgun is what we're covering now. So, um, I carry my shotgun at home with a uh, cruiser ready or a modified cruiser ready which is a term that we use in law enforcement. Long guns are inherently not drop safe. I've, when I was in the Army, I've seen AR-50 or M16A2s hit the deck, and uh, this was at JRTC, Joint Readiness Training Center. You guys have been in the Army, you know what I'm talking about, or NTC. It's, it's war games, and so everyone's shooting blanks, and I've seen people drop their gun in the, in the, the weapon discharge. They're not necessarily drop safe weapons long guns like pistols are. So you don't want to carry one in the chamber. Cruiser ready, generically speaking, is that you don't have the safety on. I don't when I'm carrying in my patrol, uh, patrol vehicle or at home, especially at home. Um, and there is not a round in the chamber. It's locked. The slide is locked. And so the only thing I have to do is hit this button and rack around. Now there was, a, there was a round in the chamber so it ejected out, but you get the idea. So boom, now this is ready to get involved with whatever home invasion situation you may have. Uh, we'll discuss more of that in general. But, because I'm left handed I carry my brass, uh, the brass up. Um, and you'll see me working in the idea of uh, brass down and I'll put pictures in of that and uh, the benefits of that and brass up you do you just remember that in a stressful situation uh, your gross motor skills are going to be crap and that's one of the downfalls of the shotgun anywhere between five to eight rounds is all you have which is more than enough for 90% of all your problems, especially in home defense. Um, but remember what I said in the last video, one is none, two is one. Uh, if you see one bad guy, I'll assume there's two. If you see two bad guys, I'll assume there's three. You always know there's going to be more than what you're dealing with. Um, so as you're manipulating the weapon and you decide to top it off, that's, gro that's uh, fine motor skills. But I would always recommend if you have a lull in the combat, in the, the fight, and you're behind cover to top it off. But let me run this dry. So, boom. We will, I will roll in some B-roll of me doing what you say, a combat reload, where you're just putting it in the chamber like that. And 
boom. These are fine motor skills. You have to practice them so they become uh, second nature. This would be your right-handed. Uh, you bring it out like that. You're tipping the shotgun up so it's on the side, and you're just dropping it in like that. Boom. You need to practice this stuff. Don't assume that you're going to buy your shotgun, go to the range, shoot some paper, and everything's fine. You need to practice dry firing your weapons in a non-stressful situation like training. So when you are in stress, when you are in a stressful situation, hopefully you fall back on your training. When I say training, guys, not just once a month, you should be doing this stuff weekly. If you have a safe place to uh, unload your weapon, to leave your your ammo some completely someplace else. I got these on Amazon like for ten dollars for ten rounds. They're they're perfectly good practice rounds to manipulate uh, your shotgun and practice handling it safely. That way under stress you will do this stuff instinctively. Um, I was in a, uh, a situation where I was helping serve a warrant. I, I think I've brought this up on the channel before. I know I have and uh, the, the bad guys released three pit bulls on me. I had to f shoot the lead pit bull. Luckily, the other two freaked out and ran away. Um, later on, my partner said, well, how many rounds did you fire? And I said, I think two. Remember, I was under stress. I think two. And he said, no, I think I heard three rounds. He goes, well, check your magazine. So I did an administrative unload of my magazine. And it was topped off. I was like, what the hell? I had done a combat reload or magazine exchange, excuse me, in a lull after the shooting. And I don't even remember doing it because I practiced this so much on the range. You know, our instructors are pounding it in our heads. You know, well, if you're if there's a lull in the action, and you're behind cover, you're not shooting, moving, communicating, take advantage of that sweet, sweet time and top off your weapon with a fresh magazine. Same thing with a shotgun. You could be doing administratively topping it off. That's what the saddle is for. And uh, that's what's so great about the shotgun. It has its minuses. The minuses would be that you only five to eight rounds. Uh, it's much more versatile as far as how you can load the weapon, as far as what kind of sh uh, shot. I'm a big fan of double lock, but triple lock uh, for defense. Do not use bird shot. It's just not designed for self-defense. And it just doesn't have the trauma takedown ability as a good double lock round or triple lock round. Guys, Use the appropriate ammo for a gunfight. Don't don't load it up with steel bird shot and think that well, I'm just going to pepper him and he'll run away. Don't ever assume that's the kind of thing that you that, that's going to happen. Um, you're with your you're with your shotgun, and you're going to just sling it and then go to your sidearm. That's uh, a benefit. Again on the, again on the previous. Uh, video I talked about having uh, like I just leave my duty gun belt hanging by the closet near the bed so in the middle of the night if things go bump in the night somebody's kicking my back door I will always grab a long gun and again I will discuss in the pistol one part three why a pistol is better than a shotgun and a rifle in certain situations but it's good to have the best of both worlds so uh, let's say I grab my shotgun instead of my rifle and I got my shotgun and guys huge fan of the shotgun for home defense so don't write it off M16, AR-15, these are all amazing home defense weapons with the right ammunition. Shotgun with the right ammunition is amazing home defense weapon. So, you're firing your weapon and you run out of ammunition, you can sling your shotgun and go to your pistol. Simple as that. Um, and you need to practice this stuff. You need to practice it in a safe space separate from your ammo. We've talked about this a million times. I can't emphasize that enough. Practice dry firing your shotgun or your long gun, slinging it, and then practice switching to your pistol. And again, I have the CERT laser pistol. I have a whole video on the CERT laser pistol and why this is just an amazing training tool. Again, none of this replaces range time. You always have to, at least every other week or so, maybe I put a magazine through my pistol. Not a lot, guys. I, I can't afford a crap load of ammo in my department. Back in the day, used to just give us as much ammo as we wanted for practice, but things are expensive, budgets suck now, and that's just the way it is. So, um, you need to dry fire practice a lot, and that will definitely, it's not going to turn you into a Navy SEAL, but it will give you the skills you need, especially like something with a shotgun, where you're having to 
you know, manipulate and put in those training rounds and stuff like that. That is fine motor skills that will totally dissipate during actual combat situations or actual fighting situations. Your gross motor skills uh, kick in, your fine-tuned motor skills go out the window, and unless you've trained that shit over and over and over, it's not going to look pretty and it may not work at all. Okay? So take that in consideration. Shotgun is an amazing, if you could only have one home defense weapon, I would probably go with the shotgun. Uh, my, the rifle to me is my first choice, shotgun close second. Uh, pistol is your all-purpose uh, weapon, and I'll cover that more in the pistol one, but what happens if you have a baby? You need to pick the baby up and you're holding the baby, but now you have one hand with your pistol with a light on it. And on my training, this is my training belt. I don't have a light on my training belt. But um, that's the kind of stuff you would consider, you know, why you would choose one over the other. But we'll discuss more of that in the pistol uh, video. Um, guys, I hope you like this. Let me know what you think. All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. See this? This is my boomstick. Let's roll. Hey, let's be careful out.